Hey guys, so today's video is about some misconceptions that a lot of people think about reptiles. Now I made this video because talking to relatives, um, many of them asked me when I told them I had leopard gecko, they asked me if it bites people, you know, if it's disgusting, slimy and stuff, and I just realized that a lot of people just have these crazy ideas about reptiles in their heads, and so I kind of wanted to help clear these up. Alright, let's get started. For some reason, whenever people think of um, reptiles, you know, like snakes or lizards, like the Sinol, and well, people tend to think of them as slimy, disgusting monster things, right? And that's completely not true. While it's true that the close relatives of reptiles, amphibians, like frogs and salamanders, do have soft skin most of the time that is kind of slimy, reptiles actually have really hard, scaly skin. And if you ever own a reptile or ever just handle one, I can assure you they are completely dry and actually kind of hard and scaly. Now, I'm not exactly sure how this misconception started, but I'm pretty sure it's because snakes have, you know, really shiny skin most of the time. And I guess people saw that and decided, you know, it must be slime or something that's causing it to glisten. But I assure you reptiles are not slimy, so don't let that deter you from buying one or keeping one as a pet. Alright, next. Now, I'm not going to deny that reptiles have the ability to bite you, and then if you don't tame yours, or if you have a really, you know, feisty species, or if you're, like, harassing it, or stressing it out too much, yes, your reptile will bite you. And another common way that people get bit is when they often hand-feed the reptile, and then if you feed, hand-feed your reptile too much, right, they can oft often just associate your hand with food, and then whenever you stick it in, they'll just bite it. However, first of all, reptile bites from lizards and other common pet reptile species don't really hurt. I mean, it's not like you're keeping a crocodile or something. I mean, at least I hope you're not. So despite what movies and other media might have led you to believe about reptiles, they're really not dangerous, especially the pet ones. Now, of course, I'm not denying that there are some reptiles that can hurt or even kill you, like these venomous snakes, for example. However, most of the common reptiles that you can find in stores are harmless, and that's why they're pets. I mean, you can't exactly go to, like, a pet store and buy a cobra, now can you? So don't let this misconception deter you from keeping reptiles. Just remember to do your research and choose a species that isn't dangerous. And finally... For some reason, Whenever a lot of people think about reptiles, they often think of them as villains, as, you know, evil, cold beings. Heck, there's even a Spider-Man villain called the Lizard. And all this seems to stem from the fact that reptiles are cold-blooded. So, m many people think of them as, you know, cold, unthoughtful, evil animals just because of the word cold-blooded. But what does cold-blooded really mean? Well, according to the dictionary, it means scientifically an animal that has a body temperature varying with the environment. So, but, often people use it in literature as me meaning um, without emotion or pity, you know, cruel. And I think this is the reason a lot of people just instantly think of reptiles and other cold-blooded animals as evil, just because, you know, of the uh, synonym. But honestly, like, scientifically speaking, they're not cold and they're not evil. Cold-blooded just means that their temperature is the same as the room. And ironically, since most of the common pet reptile species come from like tropical or desert areas, they're usually really really hot because of their environment. Well, that's the last misconception I'm going to talk about today. I will probably make a sequel to this sometime uh, with another three misconceptions and I'll probably continue the series until I run out of misconceptions to do. Before you go, just a reminder, if you have any feedback or any suggestions for the sequel, for, like more misconceptions that you've heard often, well then feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll check them out when I have time. Alright then, bye!